Part 1. The Certainty of the Piari Tribulation, Rapture 1st and 2nd, Thessalonians Commentary by Marianne, Manley. All scripture references are taken from the King, James Bible. Three Steps to Understanding the Rapture 1. We must be saved and have His Spirit. Before we can understand the rapture, we must understand the Bible. Only saved people can understand the Bible because it cannot be understood unless we have God's Spirit in us to help us. When we believe the Gospel, we receive His Spirit. How are we saved? We hear the Word and trust the Gospel of our salvation, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the Word of Truth, the Gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. What is the Gospel of our salvation? Salvation is by grace through faith in Christ alone. Jesus paid it all and we added nothing to our salvation. We must believe how that, by crucifixion, Christ, the Son of God, died for our sins, all who live in mystery, according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4. 2. We must believe that God has preserved His Word to us. If you are not a King James Bible believer, then please read the helpful article provided in the appendix. One Bible helps us to all say the same thing. 3. We must understand that Christ from heaven made Paul the Apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 13, to reveal the mystery to the body of Christ in the dispensation of the grace of God, Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 9. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it. Of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ, Galatians 1 verses 1 and 11, 12. When we understand Paul's distinctive ministry to the body of Christ, then we are rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Two groups, Peter's and Paul's. When I understood that God had two groups of people in the Bible, then I began to understand the Bible so much better. The Bible became so fascinating that I just can't get enough. One group will live eternal in the heavens, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1. The other group will live in the kingdom on earth forever, Matthew 19 verses 28 and 29, Isaiah 60 verses 19 to 21, Revelation 22 verse 5. Peter and Paul preached a different gospel, good news, to different groups of people. Peter preached the gospel of the circumcision to the believing remnant of Israel, while Paul preached the gospel of the uncircumcision to the body of Christ. Peter's group will live on earth, and Paul's group will live in heaven. The order of Paul's Acts epistles including when and where they were written. Galatians 1. Thessalonians. Acts 15 verse 35. Acts 18 verse 5. Antioch Corinth AD 52 AD 53 approximate dates. 2 Thessalonians. Acts 18 verse 11. Corinth AD 53. 1 2 Corinthians Corinthian S. Acts 19 verse 10. Acts 20 verse 1. Ephesus AD 56. Romans. Acts 20 verse 3. Macedonia Corinth AD 57 AD 58. The two ministries of Christ. Earthly ministry. For Gospels and early Acts. King of Israel, John 1 verse 49. Declaration, the Law and the Prophets, Coming Wrath. Matt 5 colon 17, 18. Gave himself a ransom for the sins of his people, Matt. 2028, Luke 1 verses 68 and 77 seated at the right hand of the Father until his enemies, are made his footstool, Acts 2, 34-36, called twelve apostles on the earth, Matt. 4, 18-22, 10, 1-5. Christ commands the twelve apostles to confine their ministry to Israel. Matt 10, 5, 6. Instructs the twelve to carry out the Great Commission. Mark 16, 14-18. 
Gospel of the Kingdom, proclaimed Mark 1 verses 14 and 15. Terms of Salvation, Repent, Believe on His Name, Submit to Water Baptism, Mark 1 verse 15. 1616, John 3 verse 16, 2031. Earthly Hope and Calling, Matt 5 colon 5. Christ's Visible Return to the Earth, Matt 24, 29, 30, Acts 1 verses 10 to 12. Eternal reign from the new Jerusalem on the new earth. Rev 21. Heavenly Ministry. Paul's Epistles and Mid-Acts. Head of the Body, Colossians 1 verse 18. Declaration, Grace and Peace. Phil 1 colon 2. Gave himself a ransom for. The Sins of the World. Item 2 colon 5, 6. Seated at the right hand of the Father in a position of exaltation over all things to the church. F1, 20-23. Called one apostle, Paul, from heaven Acts 9, 1-4, 26, 13, 19. Christ appoints Paul the apostle of the Gentiles. Rom, 11, 13. Instructs us to carry out the commission of reconciliation. Dash 2 Cor 5, 18, 19. Gospel of the grace of God proclaimed Acts 20, verse 24. Terms of salvation, believe. Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Acts 16.31, Icor. 15, 1 4. Heavenly hope and calling. Call 1, 5. Christ's invisible return in heaven, IFS. 4, 13 18. Eternal reign with Christ from the new heavens. F, 1 10, 2 6, 7. As members of the body of Christ, we are responsible to proclation, defend, and stand for the heavenly ministry of Christ. God has two different people, with two different and separate programs. Kingdom of God, earthly. Kingdom of heaven, Israel and proselytes. Prophecy program, the juice gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 3 verses 1 to 2 Acts. 2 verses 36 to 39 KJV Heavenly Body of Christ THE Church Mystery Program Paul's Gospel of Grace Row 1 colon 16 2 colon 16 1 COR 15 colon 1 dash 4 F2 colon 8 dash 9 KJV All saved people, saints of all ages, are I in Christ. However, Apostle Paul was the first to be saved and sealed I and the body of Christ. To say that the twelve are I and the body is to say, the twelve are not part of Israel's covenants and that they will not be able to function according to prophecy in order to reign with Christ in the millennium kingdom as part of a kingdom of priests. But that's simply not what the KJV Bible, rightly divided, teaches us. The Bible can be pictured as a sentence with a parenthesis in the middle. Body of Christ. If we take the parenthesis out of a sentence, we still have a complete sentence. We are living in a giant parenthesis between two bookends. These bookends are the two appearings of Christ to the body of Christ. The first appearing of Jesus Christ was in the air to Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, and his last appearing is to the body of Christ at the rapture. Both appearings are found in Titus. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared, to Paul on the road to Damascus, to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, the rapture, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Titus 2 verses 11 and 13. To reiterate. The bookends of the dispensation of grace are the two appearings in Titus 2 verses 11 and 13. The Lord Jesus Christ first appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, Paul's salvation and commission as the apostle to the Gentiles, Acts 9, 22, 26, and Romans 11 verse 13. Then last went the fullness of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 25, comes in and the body of Christ is raptured. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 and 17. When the parenthesis, mystery, is removed at the 
Rapture, God will continue what he began on earth almost as if the parenthesis never was. To understand the rapture, we must rightly divide mystery from prophecy. Notice that the Bible is laid out, prophecy, mystery, prophecy. Why right division is really important. You will never understand your Bible. You may have believed the wrong gospel. You will not understand what God is doing today. You will not understand who you are in Christ. You will not be a good ambassador for Jesus Christ. You may be sharing the wrong message to the world. You will not know how the Holy Spirit is working through His Word. You may be following doctrine that is not meant for you, which makes that doctrine false. You will not know God's plan and purpose for mankind. You will not understand how the life of Christ is manifest in your mortal flesh. You may not be fit for the master's use and prepared for every good work. 2 Timothy 2 verse 21 When it is all over, you will be ashamed and not a workman for God. You will be unapproved unto God not rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 You need to know right division so that you can believe it, not oppose yourselves, and get out of the snare of the devil and believe the truth, not a lie. 2 Timothy 2 verses 25 and 26 Gleaned from a YouTube teaching by Pastor Tom Brescia, January 21, 2017 Mystery Prophecy The Catching Away of the Church, the Body of Christ Rapture In your Bible studies, keep in mind that from Genesis up to Acts 9, no one had ever heard of the Body of Christ, much less about the Rapture. It was a complete mystery hid in God from Genesis to Acts 9, and not revealed to anyone until Jesus first revealed it to our God-appointed Apostle Paul. Paul was made a minister of the dispensation of the grace of God. Why? To preach among the Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Learn more about this mystery. F3 colon 1-10 1 co 2, 6 to 8, 1 t 2 57, call 1 colon 19 27, row 11 25, 1 co 15 colon 51 52, row 16 25 KJV. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Romans 16 verse 25. 26. Paul says believers are saved, established, and stabilized. 1. According to my gospel, justification by faith, imputed righteousness, which Christ revealed to Paul, Romans 3 verses 22 to 28, 4 colon 5, 23 to 25, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4. 2. Preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, kept secret since the world began, but now is manifested, Christ's ministry from heaven to us through Paul, the doctrine in Romans to Philemon. 3. And by the scriptures of the prophets, all the rest of the Bible from a Pauline point of view, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith, to all, Romans 16 verse 25. 26. Edification Process God is the builder of the spiritual edifice of sound doctrine in our spirit and soul. God builds the edifice of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in us. God gave the blueprint of the edifice to Paul his master builder for us. Paul's 13 letters to the body of Christ build sound doctrine into the soul of the believer. An edifice is a building. We can picture Paul's 13 letters as a two-story house. The first foundation is Romans. The Corinthian letters and Galatians form the walls of the first story. The foundational doctrine in Romans must be understood before proceeding to the advanced doctrine of Ephesians. The foundation of the second story is Ephesians. Philippians and Colossians form the walls of this level. Then the Thessalonian letters put the roof on top with the hope of the first, first Thessalonians, and second coming of Christ, second Thessalonians. Asterisk all of Paul's epistles were written after the Jerusalem. Council. Then first and second Timothy, 
Titus, and Philemon are related to grace living with respect to the local church. They are how to live in the house. Romans doctrine is related to our salvation, justification. Faith Ephesians doctrine related to the body of Christ, sanctification. Charity Thessalonians doctrine related to Christ's coming, glorification. Hope. The key verse 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. To understand the Bible, we must study God's word God's way. God tells us how to study his word, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Mandate, command, study. Motive, to shew thyself approved to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, at the judgment seat of Christ. Method, rightly dividing the word of truth, making the divisions that God makes in his word. All the Bible is truth. We are to divide truth from truth, not truth from error. Some truth is for the body of Christ, Romans to Philemon, who will live eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 While the rest of the Bible is for the people who will live in the kingdom on earth, the goal is to understand all of the Bible from a Pauline perspective. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. 2 Timothy 2 verse 7 Please notice that the order of the books begins at the bottom with Romans. Thirteen letters written by Apostle Paul, order, structure, and purpose, Philemon a letter of appeal, to a friend, demonstration, intercession, one and second Timothy and Titus letters, to individual church leaders, utilization, exhorts, one and second Thessalonians letters, to a questioning church, expectation, encourages, Colossians a letter to a wavering church, culmination, admonishes, Philippians a letter to a giving church, subordination, servanthood, Ephesians a letter to a stable church, exaltation, identification, Galatians a letter to a Galatians church, liberation, correction, 1 and 2 Corinthians letters to a carnal church, sanctification, reproof, Romans a letter to stabilize a church far away, justification, explained. Each of Paul's letters builds on the other and is designed to edify our inner man, so that we go from being spiritual babies to mature useful sons of God, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy 3 verse 17. Do you know that the but now, Ephesians 2 verse 13, began in Acts 9, with Paul the Apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 13, salvation on the road to Damascus? The dark stormy clouds of the horrific tribulation were brewing on the horizon in Acts 7, but God interrupted prophecy and inserted the mystery. God now offers us grace and peace, the middle part. For us, it is glorious sunshine. Believers can relax and enjoy the grace and peace he is dispensing today, but unbelievers are still under the law and will be judged by it. We must love God's word. They received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians 2 10-12 Dispensation defined Paul uses the word dispensation four times. Bible study needs to be both biblical and dispensational. Dispensation means dispersing or distributing. A gas station dispenses gasoline, and a pharmacy dispenses medications. In the Bible, it means God is dispensing a set of instructions for people to believe and obey. A dispensation is not a period of time, but rather it is God's method of distributing or dispersing His will in a given age. We need to study God's word God's way. We are commanded to, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. We divide our truth from the rest of the Bible. Why God kept the mystery a secret. In the Bible, a mystery is a divine secret. The truth for this dispensation of grace was not revealed in the Old Testament, nor at the time of Christ and his twelve apostles. It was first revealed by Christ to his one apostle Paul. If Satan had known that he lost both heaven and earth when Jesus Christ died, on the cross for mankind, he would not have allowed him to be crucified. Satan attacks the mystery and the doctrine of our blessed hope, the rapture. Satan had attacked this truth in Thessalonica. 
Paul had to write two letters to defend it. In the first letter, Paul focuses on the rapture. In the second letter, Paul focuses on the day of the Lord to let them, and we, know we are not in it. Satan knows that if we have a clear understanding of when the body of Christ began and when we will be taken up to heaven, that we will have stable minds. We counter Satan's lies with God's truth, rightly divided. After Thessalonians we will be in heaven, so there is no reproof or correction. Notice that the Bible is divided according to the divine order of the books. The basic division of the Bible is prophecy, mystery, prophecy. Everything hinges on the true word of God, the KJV. The basic divisions of the Bible are laid out in the order of the books of the Bible. All the Bible is truth. The key is to rightly divide truth from truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The word of God is divided into time past, Ephesians 2 verses 11 and 12, but now, Ephesians 2 verse 13, and ages to come, Ephesians 2 verse 7. God spoke to the kingdom on earth believers by prophets since the world began, Luke 1 verse 70. But God gave Paul the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, Romans 16 verse 25, for the body of Christ, the heavenly kingdom believers. From the beginning, God had a plan for both the heaven and the earth, Genesis 1 verse 1. The people of Israel walk by sight, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 22, but the members of the body of Christ walk by faith, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. We have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, Ephesians 1 verse 3. Christ crucified and risen again is the major foundation for both groups of people. Other people have died on a cruel cross, but only the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected. Jesus is God. Salvation is 100% God and 0% man. The pre-tribulation rapture is certain. The wrath is the tribulation, 70th week of Daniel, or Jacob's trouble. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord. Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 7, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians 3 verse 20, and the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God, and into the patient waiting for Christ, 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 5, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Titus 2 verse 13. For they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had. Unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols, to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 9 and 10. We will be saved from the trib. For God has not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9. The purpose of this book is to relate the certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture by understanding God's word in the Thessalonian letters. Have you ever asked yourself why the legs of Nebuchadnezzar's image, Daniel 2 verses 31 to 35, are so long? Have you ever wondered why the atrocities of Hitler in World War II are not mentioned in the Bible? Yet, we know that other future events have been prophesied such as the Lord Jesus Christ's second coming to stand on the Mount of Olives, Zechariah 14 verse 4. The answer to these questions are really simple once you understand that we are living in the unprophesied time period when God is not fulfilling prophecy, known as the dispensation of grace. The key is rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. We have to divide the Bible where God divides it. God divides the books of the Bible written by Paul from the rest of the Bible. The birthday of the true church, the body of Christ, was not the Jewish holy day of Pentecost in Acts 2, but Paul's salvation in Acts 9. Everything outside of Paul's letters is known as prophecy because it was prophesied in God's word. The Bible is laid out prophecy, mystery, prophecy. Once we have this understanding, verses that we thought contradicted themselves no longer do. The Bible becomes even more fantastic once we learn to rightly divide the truth. With so much clarity, we will not be able to get enough of God's exciting and fascinating word. 
If there is anyone who is not certain that the rapture of the church, the body of Christ, will occur before the tribulation, the study of these two epistles will bring them great comfort and put their minds at rest. These letters should convince anyone that the rapture is before the tribulation or wrath. The rapture is limited to only church members. The rapture is exclusively found in Paul's letters because it was a mystery that Christ only revealed to Paul. Paul was the first member in the church, the body of Christ, 1 Timothy 1 verse 16. Both the dispensation of grace and the body of Christ began with his salvation on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. Paul repeats his salvation testimony to the Jews in Acts 22 and to the Gentile king Agrippa in Acts 26. My goal is to share the truth of what Christ tells us through Paul in a concise and interesting way so that readers will understand the word of God better. My hope is that the reader will learn how to rightly divide the truth and have more of value at the judgment seat of Christ. The many pictures and great maps help to give visual understanding of key concepts. Knowing God's word increases our faith and helps us to grow spiritually so Christ in us can be glorified. The only thing we can take with us when we die or are raptured is the doctrine that is stored up in our inner man. I used to wonder why the legs of the image in Nebuchadnezzar's dream were disproportionately too long for the rest of the body. I found the answer when I learned how to rightly divide. God delayed destroying the feet. The capital city of Thessalonica in Macedonia was founded in 315 BC by Cassander, one of the four Greek generals who divided up the empire of Alexander the Great. It was located on the Ignatian Way, Rome's greatest highway. The city was first named Therma because of the hot springs. He renamed the city in honor of his wife Thessaloniki, a half-sister of Alexander. It was a military and commercial city known for its wealth and its vices. When I visited the city in 1977, I went to a large cave in a big rock with torches along the walls and a spring of water in the middle of it. I was told that this had been a meeting place for Paul's church. Paul and Barnabas had separated prior to his second apostolic journey. Paul took Silas, Silvanus, with him, and along the route he picked up Timothy and Dr. Luke. Paul has joy, excitement, and approval concerning the Thessalonians. Their faith, love, and lives proved how successful the preaching of Paul, Silas, and Timothy had been among them. Paul preached in Thessalonica for less than a month. It was a very young local church. In that short time, he not only organized a local church, but he also managed to teach the great doctrines of the faith to these eager learners. Paul says that they are a model church and samples, or examples, not only to the other churches in Macedonia and Achaia, but every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything, 1 colon 8. The Thessalonians' letters were probably written in A.D. 53 from Corinth by Paul. There are five short chapters in 1 Thessalonians, which all end with a reference to the coming of Christ to rapture the body of Christ. There are three chapters in 2 Thessalonians. They are very rich in doctrine. These letters were written while sign gifts were still in effect. Sign gifts ceased in Acts 28 verse 28. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 8 to 13. The occasion for 2 Thessalonians was Silas and Timothy's return from checking on the spiritual welfare of the Thessalonian church. How do we know that Silas went with Timothy? Paul's sending of Timothy is recorded in 1 Thessalonians 3 verses 1 and 2 and their return in Acts 18 verse 5. Paul was thrilled by his splendid report of their love for him and wrote a cheerful, charming, and comforting letter. 2 Thessalonians was probably written within a few months after the first letter, Acts 18 verse 11, after Paul heard about the forged letter that had shaken them up and made them fearful. Paul presents the rapture in relation to different aspects at the end of each of the five chapters of 1 Thessalonians. Our salvation by Christ and our deliverance before the tribulation, 1, 9, 10. Reward for service at the judgment seat of Christ, 2, 19-20. Christ's presentation of the body of Christ to the Father in glory, 3, 13. The details of our rapture, 4, 13-18. 
Christ's work to keep, sanctify, and preserve believers, spirit, soul, and body, and the confident expectation of the rapture before the wrath, 5, 8, 9, 23. The Thessalonian church letters are the last ones in the order of Paul's epistles in the canon of Scripture, although they were probably written after Galatians. This is because the mature church depicts the goal of the believer's sanctification, thinking, conduct, departure, and destination. The rapture ends the dispensation of grace, the opportunity to believe Paul's gospel, and join the body of Christ. The rapture is the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory, Ephesians 1 verse 14. We will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17. Interestingly, Paul had already been caught up to the third heaven, 2 Corinthians 12 verses 2 to 4. Paul wrote 13 letters, 9 to churches, and 4 to individuals. These are often called the pastoral epistles. The pre-prison epistles, Romans to Galatians, are about the cross. Romans is foundational doctrine and explains the cross, Corinthians are about the preaching of the cross, and Galatians mentions the cross in every chapter. The prison epistles are about the church, the body of Christ. Ephesians is advanced doctrine for the body of Christ. Philippians is advanced edification for the body of Christ. Colossians is about holding Christ as the head of the body of Christ and equal to the other persons of the triune Godhead. The Thessalonian letters are about the coming of Christ in the air to catch up the body of Christ and are also about the second coming of Christ to the ground to establish his earthly kingdom with Israel. Romans is foundational doctrine. Corinthians is reproof for not obeying the doctrine in Romans. Galatians is correction for being removed from the doctrine in Romans. Ephesians is advanced doctrine for the body of Christ. Philippians is reproof for not holding to doctrine in Ephesians. Colossians is correction for not holding Christ as the head according to Ephesians. The Thessalonian letters are doctrine concerning the coming of Christ. There is no more reproof or correction after the Thessalonian letters because the body of Christ will be in heaven. Why are the Thessalonian letters last in the order of the church epistles, but before the pastoral epistles? The order of Paul's letters is designed to take us from milk to meat. If you studied them in God's order, then they will do for you what they are designed to do. This is why the books are not in a chronological order, but an order of sanctification, spiritual growth, following the pattern in 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17, doctrine, reproof, correction. Several times in his letters, Paul approves of what the Thessalonians are doing, 5.11. Paul encourages the Thessalonians to stand fast in the doctrine they have believed and to abound more and more. 1 Thessalonians 1, 8, 3, 8, 4, 10, 5, 1, 11, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 15, 3, 4. Paul repeats the gospel of their salvation several times in this letter. 1 10, 4, 14, 5, 10. Paul would have liked for all the churches to understand the message of grace like this church had. They turned from paganism, worshipping idols, dead gods, to worshipping the true and living God. Often persecution produces spiritual growth. Paul encourages them to continue in holy living. The Thessalonians were able to operate and function the way God intended them to because they understood the mystery that Christ gave to Paul. The word of God was able to work effectually in them. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because, when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 The Spirit of God uses the word of God to work in us. God is able to make an ordinary man or woman extraordinary in their understanding of the Bible if they study it rightly divided and believe what God says in it. When we come to 2 Thessalonians, Paul will clear up the wrong division that had crept into the church. By a forged letter someone had moved the rapture, saying that it was past, and they were in the tribulation awaiting the second coming of Christ. They said that the reason for their persecution was that they were living in the tribulation. 
This false doctrine and wrongly dividing of the word of truth had shaken up the members of that church and many believers today. There will be many fascinating things discussed in these letters, particularly the mystery of iniquity, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7, but we must keep in mind that these letters go together. We will look more closely at the false redefining of terms that was going on in the forged letter when we get to that epistle. We will also examine Christ's coming to the earth to set up his kingdom in greater detail. There is a difference between waiting for the church to go and waiting for the kingdom to come. Paul expects us to understand the second letter in light of the first. The two epistles naturally link themselves together because the main theme in both is the coming of Christ. Therefore, we need to study these documents verse by verse as a pair. Paul gives a clear description of the pre-tribulation, pre-wrath, rapture. He mentions the gospel of God and the gospel of Christ these gospels will be defined. The apostle knew that he wrote by inspiration. Several years elapsed before Paul could return to the Thessalonians on his third apostolic journey. The judgment seat of Christ, Romans 14 verse 10, 1 Corinthians 3 verses 10 to 17, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, is after the rapture. Any blemishes or false doctrine will be burned off of the believers there. Then Christ will present the glorious church to the Father. It will be holy and without blemish, Ephesians 5 verse 27. Finally, in Genesis 3 verse 15, God mentions two seed lines when speaking to the serpent. Satan's evil seed line began with Cain. We will investigate this further when we explore the mystery of iniquity in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7. Theme, living life with the rapture in view. Be the model church, continue with your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope until the coming of our Lord. Key verse, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, and labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father, 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3. 1 Thessalonians outline the model church that the Thessalonians were is what we should be. Model Church A. The three tenses of the believer. 1. Work of faith. Saved. Past. 2. Labor of love. Examples evangelizing. Present. 3. Patience of hope. Salvation from the wrath to come. Future. B. Model minister and preacher, Paul and his reward. 1. Pure motive. 2. Genuine love as a mother and father. 3. The result, genuine faith. 4. They are Paul's reward, his joy, and crown. See model brother, Timothy, and his good report and love. 1. Why he was sent to them. D. Model life, walk, of the believers in relation to the rapture. 1. Walk in holiness, 4, colon 1, 8. 2. Walk in love, 4, colon 9, 10. 3. Walk in honesty, 4, 11, 12. 4. Walk in hope, 4, colon 13, 18. E. Model life, walk, in relation to the day of the Lord. 1. Walk in light, 5, colon 1, 11. 2. Walk in gratitude, 5, 12, 13. 3. Walk in obedience to God's will, 5, colon 14, 28. The purpose of 1 Thessalonians, Paul answers the question of what happens to those who are dead and believed in Christ when the rapture occurs. Paul wants to encourage the new believers in the young church. Paul answers questions about, 1. Whether or not they should quit their jobs and just preach while they wait for Christ. 2. He assures them that saints that have died will take part in the rapture. And, 3. The rapture will occur before the wrath of God, the tribulation. 4. Paul urges them to be sure not to defraud, rip off, cheat, another person by allowing that person to worship idols instead of the true God. 5. He wants them to live a responsible and holy life serving God. 6. He warns them of pagan immorality, fornication. 7. They are to honor and follow the leaders in their assembly. 8. He wants them to work and preach to the lost and saved as he did. 1 Thessalonians chapter review sentences. The review sentences are so simple because these letters are so well organized, clear, and concise. 
1. Model Church 2. Model Minister, Paul 3. Model Brother, Timothy 4. Model Walk and the Pre-Tribulation Rapture 5. Model Walk, because they are not in the day of the Lord Each chapter in 1 Thessalonians ends with a reference to the rapture Chapter 1 The Rapture in Relation to Our Salvation from Sin and Deliverance from the Wrath to Come Chapter 2 The Rapture in Relation to Rewards at the Judgment Seat of Christ Chapter 3 Christ's Next Presentation of the Body of Christ to the Father Chapter 4 Details Concerning the Rapture, Our Comfort and Hope Chapter 5 That the God of Peace would preserve us wholly blameless in spirit, soul, and body until the Rapture Great Doctrines Paul taught in 1 Thessalonians Godhead, Trinity, 1, 3, 3, 11. Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit, 1, 5, 6, 4, 8, 5, 19. Power and Assurance, 1, 5. Election of the Body of Christ, 1, 4. Justification, 1, 9, 2, 12, 5, 24. Sanctification and Brotherly Love, 4, 3, 9, 10, 5, 15, 23. Glorification are catching up and resurrection, 4, 14, 18. Life of personal holiness, pleasing to the Lord, 2, 12, 4, 1, 7. Christ's coming to save us from the wrath to come, 1, 10, 2, 19, 3, 13, 4, 14, 17, 5, 8, 10, 23. Day of the Lord, 5, 1, 3. Second Thessalonians Outline 1. Persevere, despite persecution. 2. Corrects false doctrine, the day of the Lord explained, we are not in it. 3. Lazy busy bodies should go back to work and Paul's trademark signature. 2 Thessalonians Chapter Review Sentences 1. Rest with us. 2. Gathered with us. 3. Follow us in word and work. In clear orderly, logical letters Paul explains the rapture. It is the result of their receiving the gift of salvation by grace through faith alone in what Christ has done, justification, sanctification, and glorification at the rapture. In both letters, Paul corrects confusion about the rapture. Paul understood both prophecy and mystery. He shares details about Christ coming for the body of Christ in the air at the rapture and Christ's second coming to earth. The day of the Lord is particularly prominent in his second letter. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 The Model Church 1 colon 1-5 Elect Church The Body of Christ Predestined to Live in Heaven 1 colon 6-7 And Samples to Others 1 colon 8 Enthusiastic Sharing of the Truth 1 colon 9 10 Expectant Waiting for His Son, Who Saved Us from the Wrath, to Come Although Paul had only preached to the Thessalonian church over a period of three Sabbaths, they were end samples, 1, 7. A model church not only to the other churches in Macedonia and Achaia, but every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything, 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 8. On the other hand, Paul marveled that the Galatians, the territory where Paul had gone on his first apostolic journey, had been quickly removed from the faith Paul had taught them. The Judaizers wanted them to live by keeping the law. Galatians 1 verses 6 to 9, 3 colon 1 dash 5. In contrast to the Thessalonians, the Corinthians, to whom Paul preached for more than a year and a half, were carnal and babes in need of spiritual milk. Paul had to reprimand and rebuke them because they followed 10,000 instructors from among themselves and many failed to follow their one apostle and spiritual father, Paul, 1 Corinthians 4 15, 11, 1, 14, 37. In contrast, for the Thessalonians Paul was often a cheerleader. He tells that they were already doing the right thing. He has nothing but praise for this model church. These saints in Thessalonica clearly understood the mystery and the distinctive ministry of Apostle Paul. This is why, in the very first verse, they are the only ones that God's spokesman greets as in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. They were all the way in the truth of God. Paul calls them beloved, 1, 4, cherished, 2, 7, desired, 2, 8, dear, 
2 colon 8, brethren, 2 14, his hope, joy, crown of rejoicing, 2 19, glory and joy, 2 20, children of light and the children of the day, 5 colon 5. In view of the imminent rapture of the church, we will look at some practical ways we can do ministry. We can spend our time so that it may be said of us, they sounded out the word of the Lord, 1 colon 8. Life is not about us at all. It is all about Jesus and others. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Colossians 3 verse 3. We are dead to sin and to the influence of the world. We are alive unto God. We need to do all we can to help as many as we can to take part in the rapture. The model church that the Thessalonians were is what we should be. In addition to studying the first chapter, we will also attempt to answer. Who wrote Hebrews? What are some practical ways to share the gospel and write division? What are some practical ways to do ministry? What is good and bad that we will be judged on at the judgment seat of Christ? What happened to Paulicians? Why don't we hear more about them? 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3 1 Thessalonians 1 colon 9 10 Work of faith, turn to God from idols. Labor of love, to serve the living and true God. Patience of hope to wait for his son from heaven. 1 colon 1 Paul, and Silvanus, and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you, and peace, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. These saints in the local church in Thessalonica clearly understood the mystery. Paul greets them as being in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. They were all the way in the truth of God. They understood that they were living in the dispensation of grace. They followed what Christ from heaven taught them through Paul. Dispensation means dispersing or distributing. A gas station dispenses gasoline, and a pharmacy dispenses medications. In the Bible, it means God is dispensing a set of instruction for people to believe and obey. Today God is dispensing grace and peace. The dispensation of grace is the present Gentile opportunity to believe and be saved apart from having to bless Israel. Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3, Ephesians 2 verse 13. But we should still bless Israel and all people. This is why Paul, as the spokesman for God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, salutes them on their behalf with grace and peace to those who trust the gospel. Christ made peace possible through the blood of his cross, Colossians 1 verses 14 and 24. God is offering a time of free grace to the world when anyone can believe the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4, and be saved from the consequences of their sin. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 19 and 21. Paul knew he was writing by inspiration of God. Paul had taught these believers well. They knew that they were part of the group to live in the heavenly places, the body of Christ, not in the kingdom on earth. Most of the church members were former pagan idol worshippers and also Gentile proselytes, devout Greeks. Paul first visited Thessalonica on his second apostolic journey. After Paul and Silas had been beaten, jailed, and released in Philippi, they passed through some cities in Macedonia. Those cities did not have a synagogue until they came to Thessalonica that did have one. Paul went in and over three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few, Acts 17 verses 1 to 4. Paul opened the word, explained its meaning, and alleged, laid it out clearly for them as on a table. Paul and Silas were met by strong opposition from the envious unbelieving Jews. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd. Fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, riot, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, Paul and Silas, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. 
And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason, Baal money, and of the other, they let them go. Acts 17 verses 5 to 9. They had to sneak Paul and Silas out by night. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, the unbelieving Jews, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. This is how we are to receive God's word, and search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, also, of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men, not a few, Acts 17, 10, 12. Many believed in Berea, but then the same Jews came after them. Paul was forced to flee to Athens. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also, and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul, to go as it were to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Acts 17 verses 13 to 15. Having accompanied Paul safely to Athens, Paul told his Thessalonian brothers to have Silas and Timothy follow him immediately. The rest of Acts 17 tells how Paul was moved with compassion for the people of Athens and preached the gospel of God at Mars Hill, Acts 17 verse 18, in the big amphitheater, Acts 17 verses 16 to 34. Paul waited in Athens for Silas and Timothy. After they arrived, he sent both of them back to Thessalonica to check on the spiritual welfare of the brethren there. How do we know that Silas went with Timothy? Paul's sending of Timothy is recorded in 1 Thessalonians 3 verses 1 and 2 and their return in Acts 18 verse 5. Some mocked Paul at Athens. After that he traveled to Corinth and met Aquila and Priscilla. He lived and worked with them. He knew the tent maker trade like they did. Silas and Timothy returned to Paul at Corinth. Silas is not mentioned again after that except in reminiscence, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 19, and may have returned to the little flock in Jerusalem, Acts 18 verse 5, 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 6, 2 Thessalonians 2 colon 1. Silas is also called Silvanus, many Hebrews had Greek and Roman names. Acts 18 verse 5 is when Silas and Timothy returned to Paul in Corinth and when Paul writes 1 Thessalonians. Silas was a member of the little flock. Acts 15 verses 22 to 40. He had been Peter's secretary for the writing of Peter's first epistle, 1 Peter 5 verse 12. Silas was first mentioned in Acts 15 verse 22. But Silas worked with Paul helping Gentiles and Jews become body of Christ members, because that was what God was doing now. Other saints of the circumcision, Barnabas, Luke, Justus, Andronicus, Unia, John Mark, and Aristarchus, helped Paul for the same reason, Colossians 4 verse 11. Silas will live in the kingdom on earth with Peter, while Paul will be raptured with the rest of us. Paul was concerned about the spiritual welfare of the believers in Thessalonica because of the persecution of the unbelieving idol worshippers and unbelieving Jews. Satan doesn't bother to persecute those he already has in his pocket. Satan targets those who understand the mystery. Paul continued preaching in Corinth. He began preaching in the synagogue to the Jews first, and also to the Greek, Romans 1 verse 16. Paul informed the Jews that God had changed his program and was forming another group of believers to live in the heavenly places. If they trusted that Jesus of Nazareth was their king, and that he died for our sins, believers in mystery, was buried, and rose again, then the Jews would become members of the body of Christ. They will live in heaven also. But when the Jews didn't accept his message, Paul said for the second time that he would go to the Gentiles, Acts 13 46, 18, colon 6. Paul left the synagogue and went next door and founded the Corinthian church, Acts 18 verses 1 to 17. Who wrote the book of Hebrews? God wrote Hebrews, and the name of the human writer is unknown. But we can speculate, there are three good contenders for the human writer, Silas, Mark, and Luke, 
unless the writer is someone that is unknown to us in scripture. We need to be sleuths like Sherlock Holmes. I will tell you what my theory was and that I have changed my mind, and then I will tell you the theory of Pastor Brian Ross of Grace Bible Church in Grand Rapids, Illinois. Then make up your own mind, since we may be completely wrong. We can piece together some clues. The human writer was someone who had heard Peter and the little flock preach Christ's earthly kingdom gospel at Pentecost. How shall we escape, if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, Jesus in his earthly ministry, and was confirmed unto us, the writer is in this group, by them that heard him, the twelve, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will? Hebrews 2 verses 3 and 4. Hebrews was written in the last days, before the wrath and the kingdom, Hebrews 1 verse 2. The dispensation of grace had interrupted prophecy, the writer writes to those in the world to come, Hebrews 2 verse 5, after the rapture, Romans 11 verse 25. It was clearly not written by Paul, because the doctrine is not grace, but law. Furthermore, Paul was saved by Christ on the road to Damascus in Acts 9 not from hearing the apostles preach on Pentecost in Acts 2. In fact, Paul ruthlessly persecuted the kingdom church until he was saved, Acts 8, 1, 9, 1, 26, 11. However, there are some similarities in Hebrews to what Paul preached. One reason for that is because both letters are written after the cross, and I believe another reason is that the writer of Hebrews was familiar with what Paul taught. Of course, both writers are inspired by God, but God often utilizes the writer's experience. I used to believe that Silas wrote Hebrews. Paul sent Silas and Timothy to check on the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 5. Although a member of the little flock, Silas decided to join Paul on his second apostolic journey and be part of what God was doing through Paul. Perhaps Timothy and Silas had been put in jail on their return from Thessalonica. After they were released Silas and Timothy may have traveled across Macedonia on the famous Roman road, the Ignatian Way, and taken a ship to the heel of the Italian boot and then come to Corinth by sea via Sencria. Notice that he says, They of Italy salute you, in Hebrews 13 verse 24, not that it is written from Italy. This is a plausible alternative route to Corinth to meet up with Paul, Acts 18 verse 5. I thought it possible that Silas may have written Hebrews at that time while waiting for Timothy to be released. Silas was a prophet, Acts 15 verse 32. Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, with whom, if he comes shortly, I will see you. Salute all of them that have the rule over you, Peter, James, and John, and all the saints. They of Italy salute you. Hebrews 13 verses 23 and 24. If the writer was not Silas, then it was another believer who heard Peter's group and knew a Timothy, possibly another Timothy. Silas knew that God was currently dispensing grace so all people could believe the gospel of Christ and have eternal life in heaven. Silas knew that after the Jerusalem Council, Paul had said that only his gospel is to be preached, Galatians 1 verses 6 to 9. Note all of Paul's epistles were written after the Jerusalem Council. Therefore, Silas knowingly writes of the world to come after the rapture. Israel will be encouraged when they see that God has fulfilled his promise of the rapture for the body of Christ, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 10. Mark and Luke are also good candidates. The important thing is not knowing the human writer of Hebrews, but what God said. Where was Luke? Luke who wrote the third gospel and Acts, was known as the beloved physician, Colossians 4 verse 14. He was Paul's companion and fellow worker on this second apostolic journey, but there is no indication that he went any further than Philippi at this time. He may have stayed in Philippi or returned temporarily to Troas to write the gospel of Luke. Luke does not mention Paul or the mystery in that gospel, just like in the book of Hebrews. Of the rest of the Hebrew epistles, Hebrews through Revelation, only, 2 Peter. 3.15, 16, mentions Paul. The hope of the book of Hebrews is the kingdom of heaven to come to earth. Our hope is to live eternal in the heavens, 
2 Corinthians 5 verse 1. 2 We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Paul was thankful that the body of Christ believers were growing and prayed for them before he mentioned anything else. 3 Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. This is the key verse of this letter. Paul remembered without ceasing three things about them, their work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope. Paul defines and expands on these three phrases in the next several verses. Their work of faith was to turn to God from idols to trust the faith Paul preached, 1 9, in the past. Notice that Paul does not say that they turned from idols to God. This is not splitting hairs. They turned to God and automatically turned from idols. Their labor of love is to serve the living God by sharing their faith and becoming co-laborers in the building of the body of Christ, 1 8, 9, in the present. Their patience of hope is to wait for His Son from heaven, 1 10, to come in the future. Notice that it is in our Lord Jesus Christ, anything of value is done because His Spirit is in us. Paul adds, in the sight of God and our Father. Notice the Trinity in the last sentence. God sees everything we do because He is in us, so we should live to please Him. The Godhead, Trinity, sees all that we do by the power of His Son's life in us, Galatians 2 verse 20. Paul mentions all three in the Godhead in this chapter. Paul first mentioned the Godhead on Mars Hill, Acts 17 verse 29. The three Christian hallmarks of the Christian life are also mentioned in Theses phrases, faith, hope, and charity or love, 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13. Paul again mentions their faith, charity, love, in 3, 5, 6, and hope in 4, 13-18, all three are in 5, 8. The Colossians had faith, hope, and love, Colossians 1 verse 6. God is currently building the church, the body of Christ. Christ is the foundation of the body of Christ. Paul is the master builder. Paul laid his foundation on top of Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16 verse 25, 1 Corinthians 3 verses 10 and 11. The blueprint for proper construction of the body of Christ is summarized in 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17. This is the edification process described in detail in Paul's 13 epistles, Romans to Philemon. The maturity of the believer will be evaluated at the judgment seat of Christ. The Thessalonians were a model church that we should be like. Bob Bopper says that whenever you see the word labor or work in Paul's epistles, they are always in direct connection to the judgment seat of the Savior. Most people think salvation is the end result, but salvation is the starting point. At the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, the issue of good and bad has to do with being useful or useless, worthy or worthless. Did we present our bodies a living sacrifice for Christ to live through or not? Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. At the judgment seat of Christ, we will be judged, assessed, and evaluated based on three criteria. 1. Work of faith. Was our work on earth done according to the faith delivered to us through Paul? 2. Labor of love. Did our love for Christ constrain us to labor to build the body of Christ? Were we lovingly helping others to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. Did we edify each other? Ephesians 4 16. 3. Patient in hope. Were we patiently looking for the blessed hope of our Savior's return? Were we patient with others knowing this world is not our home? We are ambassadors for Christ in a foreign land. We are only stationed here temporarily. God wants us to have something of value at the judgment seat. We have a heavenly hope, Colossians 1, 5, Titus 2 verse 13. For knowing, brethren beloved, your election of God. Their election for service happened by faith at their conversion. Paul calls them brethren beloved. We are not beloved in ourselves, but because we are accepted in the beloved, Ephesians 1 verse 6. The Father elected the Son to serve Him, Isaiah 42 verse 1. Paul is confident that they know they were called and saved by faith in our gospel, which they believed and received, 
1 Thessalonians 2 verse 12, 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 13 and 14. When a person believes the gospel, they are baptized into the body of Christ by the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13. This does not mean that each individual member of the body of Christ is elect. What is elect is the body of Christ. The individual is elect in the sense that they are holy, sanctified, set apart from the lost, as members in this group, the one new man, Ephesians 2 verse 15. We are called by the gospel. We are first saved and next sanctified or elect. God had ordained that he would have a group of believing people to serve him in heaven. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Ephesians 1 verse 4. But God has foreknowledge, and he knows the end from the beginning, Isaiah 46 verse 10. God inhabits eternity, Isaiah 57 verse 15. We live for the purpose of glorifying the Holy Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Father and the Holy Ghost. The NIV, non-inspired version, is theocentric or God-centered. All things were created by Him and for Him, Colossians 1 verse 16. God is holy. Heaven and earth exist for God, for His glory, and for His purpose. We are mere created creatures, but we are free to choose to believe and or not. 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. The gospel came to them not only in the power of the word, but also in the power of the Holy Ghost, and with much assurance. Paul assured them frequently that he spoke the truth Christ from heaven had revealed to him. They did not just tell them about our gospel, but demonstrated it by their actions. 2.10, in power and in the Holy Ghost for their sakes. We have Christ's glorious power in us, Colossians 1 verse 11. We also have the Holy Ghost to help us, Romans 5 verse 5. Believers have Christ's imputed righteousness by faith alone in Christ alone, Romans 4 verses 3 to 5, 23 to 25, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. Paul taught once saved, always saved, secure, and sealed. Ephesians 1 verses 13 and 14, Romans 5 colon 1, 8 colon 31 dash 39. Paul will elaborate on what manner of men, 1 colon 9, they were later in the letter. They were sincere, honest, and humble for your sake. Paul and his friends loved them and did all they could for their salvation and sanctification. They constantly honored Christ and what he had done, not themselves. 6. And ye became followers of us, and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost, 7. So that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. To follow Paul is to follow Jesus Christ, who sent him. The Thessalonians became followers of what Paul taught by Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16 verse 25. They were followers of us, 2 Thessalonians 3 verses 6 to 9. They followed Paul to follow Christ from heaven, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 11. It is key to follow our Apostle Paul and those who preach and teach what he said, not Peter. In spite of their affliction, they received the word with much joy of the Holy Ghost. They had no false doctrine to unlearn, only pagan superstition. They joined the group that will live in heaven, the body of Christ. They believed the mystery Paul preached while undergoing the affliction and persecution of the unbelieving Jews and pagan idolaters. The Jews were angry because of what they heard Paul say. Paul said believing what Moses said and performing the laws of Judaism was unnecessary. Just believe in what Christ did for you and be saved. Acts 13 verse 39. They had the joy of the Holy Ghost because they will live eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1. They became in samples or examples to other believers in the body of Christ in Macedonia and Achaia because they not only followed Apostle Paul, understood the mystery, but shared it. 8 For from you sounded out the word of the Lord not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God ward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. The word of the Lord are the sound words Paul preached, 2 Timothy 1 verse 13. They were not only examples to these churches, 
but every place your faith to God ward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 8. There was no need for Paul to encourage them to share their faith, because this model church was already doing so. What Paul preached was the word of God, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13. Wherever Paul went the faith of the Thessalonians had gone before him. We are complete in Christ, Colossians 2 verse 10. We are accepted in the Beloved, Ephesians 1 verse 6. We operate out of a place of total acceptance. We are already joint heirs with Christ, Romans 8 verse 17. We have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, Ephesians 1 verse 3. We already possess eternal life, Titus 1 verse 2. We are not under the law which says do, but under grace that says done. We have a personal relationship with the living God, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. As his workmanship, Ephesians 2 verse 10, we serve God motivated by a heart full of love and gratitude. We are energized by his spirit in us. So how can we practically sound forth the word of truth like the Thessalonians? Here are some practical ways to do ministry. Paul prayed. We can pray for people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, and to grow spiritually, Colossians 1 verse 9. We can share right division wherever we go. We can put the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4, on a business card and hand them out. We can hand out grace tracts. I made one called How to Be Saved in Zero, Zero, Easy Steps. We can have a bumper sticker on our cars with the gospel. We can share the gospel and write division everywhere we go. I sometimes carry witnessing material in a fanny pack, in my purse, and in my car. We can share the truth with our family, on social media, Facebook, and YouTube, etc. We can send books, tracts, and Bibles to those who need them. Using LBC, we can ship books inexpensively to the Philippines 1-800-338-5424. Using the postal system, we can mailboxes to Africa and other places around the world. Because many of you have bought our books, your money is helping us send our books and Bibles to places all over the world. From the proceeds of this ministry, we have ordered large font KJV Pew Bibles from BulkBibles.com and are preparing to ship them out along with God's Secret, Just As God Said, and other books. We recently sent some books to India. We are preparing a box for the Philippines and another for Africa. I found rightly dividing recipients for these packages on Facebook. When you buy our books, you have a part in a ministry that sounded out the word of the Lord. Another way to contribute is to go to our website, MarianneManley.com, and contribute through PayPal. God loves a cheerful giver. We have a few faithful grace givers who regularly support the ministry financially, and we are very grateful for them. Others buy our books and send them to family and friends. Others share, watch, and like our videos on social media and in emails. Our YouTube channel is Salvation, Rightly Dividing, and The Rapture. We should all give to grace ministries that do God's will, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, and bless us. We need to do all we can for as many as we can before the rapture. 9. For they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Their enthusiasm for sharing the gospel and the doctrine they learned from Paul reflected on the manner in which Paul and his friends had shared the truth with them. What was Paul's manner? And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Acts 17 verse 2. Paul used the word of God because faith comes by hearing it. This is what we are to do. Paul is our pattern, our example, and he was the first one into the body of Christ, 1 Timothy 1 verse 16. Paul wrote about idol worship of the lost Gentiles in Romans 1 verses 19 to 25. Gentiles who knew God rejected him, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator. Romans 1 verse 25. Paul did not go into Thessalonica and say, It is not right for you to worship idols. That's a terrible thing to do. He never approached pagans like that. What did Paul do? 
He preached the cross, Christ crucified and risen again, 1 Corinthians 1 verses 17 and 18, 2, colon 2. What was the result? They were soundly saved, turned to God from idols, and were serving the living and true God, not a powerless statue that could not see, hear, or speak. Note that one must turn to God, faith, before turning from sin. They heard Paul preach the good news that Jesus Christ was now saving Gentiles in mystery, apart from having to go through the nation of Israel. Paul told them that the risen, ascended, glorified Lord Jesus Christ had appeared to him on the road to Damascus and chosen him to be the apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 13. He told them that believers would live in the heavenly places. God is forming the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace, Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 9. Paul said that anyone who believed who Jesus is and what he had done for them would live in heaven with him, not in the earthly kingdom which Christ would set up with the nation of Israel. Paul understood the mystery and he understood prophecy. As ambassadors for Christ, we present the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4, and people by faith believe the word of God. A person must first hear the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, Romans 10 verse 17. The Spirit of God can use the word of God in the hearts of the believers. God's word has the power to penetrate into our hearts and transform our lives. The Bible is a supernatural book with the Holy Spirit. It is the power of God unto salvation, Romans 1 verse 16. God's word has the power to save souls and translate them from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Colossians 1 verse 13. There is a miraculous operation of God, Colossians 2 verse 12, that takes place at salvation. The motivation under grace is love and gratitude. Love is the strongest of all motivators, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14. We serve our Father out of love for what he and his son has done for us, Romans 8 verses 32 to 39. We love to do what pleases God and edifies his people. A labor of love is an expression of obedience as a son or daughter of God, Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. After we are saved, we serve God by doing good work, Ephesians 2 verse 10. 10 and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Each of the chapters in this letter ends with a reference to the Lord's return for his church. Paul often praises the Thessalonians and approves of what they have done. He repeats the gospel of their salvation several times in this letter, 110, 4.14, 5.10. We are waiting for Jesus, the Son of God, whom the Father raised from the dead. The Father raising his Son is proof that Christ was who he said he was and did what he said he did. Therefore, the first part of the verse is about our salvation, while the last part of the verse is about our deliverance from having to go through the tribulation. Paul is careful to say that Jesus delivered us from the wrath to come. Paul defines wrath for us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 9 and 10. Paul also confirms the pre-tribulation rapture in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1 and elsewhere. John the Baptist warned of the wrath to come, Matthew 3 verse 7, Luke 3 verse 7. The church will not go through the tribulation. The rapture, exit, or catching up of the church is the next event on God's timeline. The body of Christ believers have been delivered from having to go through the tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, or Jacob's trouble, Je. 30, 7, we should be very thankful. The hope of resurrection and ascension to Christ, our rapture, does and will sustain believers through the most difficult circumstances. Our blessed hope is to be raptured before we die, Titus 2 verse 13. The dispensation of grace is postponing or delaying the wrath of God. Mankind cannot solve the world's problems and bring peace and prosperity to the earth. The Lord Jesus Christ will be the only one who can do that during his first millennial reign on the earth. Our hope is not in a political party or a man-made institution. However, when the righteous are in power, we have more peace. Some rulers make our lives easier than others. Christ is our hope. How do we know Christ is coming to escort us to heaven? Because Christ rising from the dead proved that he was the Son of God, Acts 13.33, 17.31, 
Ephesians 1 verse 20. To wait doesn't mean stop and sit, it means to be busy in our work of service to the Lord. We are to give out the word of God rightly divided while we wait. The coming of Christ to take his church out of the world is not meant to be an escape mechanism to avoid paying our bills or taking a test. It is an incentive to take as many other believers with us as we can. We also want to help believers to have the greatest reward possible at the judgment seat of Christ for service done with Christ working in and through us while on earth. A strong model. Church began at Thessalonica, and we want to be like them. Dot. We wait for his son from heaven. We should live our lives with the idea that the rapture could happen anytime. Maybe today, Lord. This is the end of part one.